Royal Family's First Gay Wedding, The Remarkable Story of Queen's Cousin and His Fiancé. The Royal Family's First Gay Wedding is set to take place later this summer, with Lord Iverman Batten, son of the third Marquess of Milford Haven and cousin to the Queen, marrying airline services cabin director James Coyle. Two years ago, Lord Iver created a stir when he confessed to struggling with his sexuality throughout most of his 16-year marriage to wife Penelope Thompson, whom he married in April 1994. Finally, he admitted he was gay after finding contentment with his new love, whom he met at the Swiss ski resort of Verbier in March 2016. In September of that year, as news of his sexuality broke, Lord Iver told the Mail on Sunday, coming out is such a funny phrase, but it's what I suppose I did in a rather roundabout way, emerging to a place I'm happy to be. I have struggled with my sexuality, and in some ways I still do, it has been a real journey to reach this point. I was driven into the closet by not wanting to come to terms with who I was and facing friends and family in the early years. I buried it. I even had girlfriends as I tried to work out what I wanted to be. It was not an easy time in my teens or 20s. I'm just so pleased now to have found someone who I am happy to call my partner. Later this summer, Lord Ivor will marry Mr. Coyle in the private chapel on his Bridewell Park country estate in Devon. It will be the first ever same-sex marriage in the extended royal family. Miss Thompson, who he divorced eight years ago and is fully supportive of the union, will actually give her former husband away at the ceremony. The impending marriage has the full blessing of their extended family and their closest friends, including Prince Edward, to whose eldest child he is a godparent. The Earl and Countess of Wessex are also godparents to his two eldest daughters Ella, 22 and Alexandra, 21. Dot Ms. Thompson was 27 years old and had only known Lord Ivor for just two months before he confessed to her about his attraction to men. Dotty told her he'd had a brief relationship with a man in Venezuela before returning to Britain in his late 20s to run the family's grade one listed Elizabethan country house, Moines Park, in Steeple Bumstead, Essex. Dot their friendship blossomed over the coming months, with Penny telling the Daily Mail, we first got together when Ivor invited me up for his 30th birthday party at Moines. I stayed on afterwards to help him start his event management business and sort of never left after that. I guess we fell in love while organizing Moines as a business and riding horses daily around the estate, making plans. Then, one day, Ivor said, if I ask you to marry me would you say yes? She said she would. Their early years of marriage saw them take glamorous trips around the world family holidays in Bermuda, and long weekends spent with Joan Collins in the south of France. The Mintbattens appeared to have one of the happiest marriages in the aristocratic circles within which they mixed, but privately, Lord Ivor was secretly exploring his sexuality. Dotty told the Daily Mail, Penny accepted me for who I was, so perhaps I relaxed and felt I could explore that part of me as our marriage matured. Dot maybe what happened is, with me being so open, I'd mention it to Penny and that would make her upset. Perhaps, on reflection, I shouldn't have said anything, but, again, I don't want ever to hide anything from anybody. Dot Miss Thompson interjects, but I always asked for and demanded complete honesty from Ivor. Perhaps that is a self-destructive part of me, but I wanted to know. I gave him his freedom because I wanted him to be happy. Lord Ivor responds, I was never unhappy in our marriage I adored Penny and really loved her, but I always describe it as trying to get a square peg into a round hole. Fifteen years after their wedding day, Penny left Lord Ivor, adding she gave back all the chattels, all the mint batten jewels and left with nothing. She says, there was quite a lot of judgment, why has she done this? Because hardly anyone knew about Ivor's sexuality, which was hard to swallow. But I was approaching 40 and thought, it's now or never. I'm going to stay in this marriage where I don't feel our relationship can ever be hold or leave. I knew Ivor couldn't be his authentic self unless I left. Lord Ivor concludes, I said to James this morning, I don't think I've ever felt as happy as I do right now. I've always loved Ivor wholeheartedly and he knows me better than anyone else on this planet, he often tells me how proud he is of what I've achieved. I am proud too. Finally I am able to love myself, and the reason this marriage is acceptable to all of us, particularly our lovely daughters, is because of the character of James, the nature of the beast, the gorgeous beast.